Hey friends, my name is Julie and welcome back to my farm. This morning I'm going to take you along as I milk my dairy goats. We've got eight of them to do, so we better get started. Our goat barn is nothing but a dilapidated mobile home that was left on this property when we bought it. We actually started to demolish it, but then we got hit with a hurricane and not really having any barns on this property to sufficiently shelter our animals during that kind of severe weather, we had to turn to this building and it worked surprisingly well. So since then we have converted it into our goat barn. It's still a little bit of a mess, but it is very functional. This side bedroom right here is what we use to separate our babies. So it gives them a very large area to sleep in. We give them hay and water and a little bit of feed at night. And as you can see, they're really not stressed out about it. This is Figaro. He is our replacement buck that we are keeping from this year's kidding season. And yeah, he is a super handsome, sweet guy. But he always greets me in the morning as I'm walking into my milk room. And that's where we're headed now. So again, it's not pretty, but it works really well. This way I can milk in any kind of weather, not worry about it. I have shelter. I have a place to put all my supplies and keep them dry and clean while I milk. I typically bring out my phone and I listen to a podcast while I'm doing it. So it's actually my favorite chore of the day. It's really relaxing most of the time, as long as the girls comply. And they are definitely ready to go. So come on in, we'll get started. So I mix up a feed for all my dairy goats in the morning. It's half alfalfa pellets, half a 16% non-GMO goat feed, a little bit of sunflower seeds, and a little bit of beet pulp. And the girls really love it. I have a couple girls that just come in for some extra nutrition because they still have babies nursing on them. And they typically eat on this stanchion. And they will get a little bit less than the does that I'm actually milking. The does that I'm milking go on the big milking stand. So this gate goes right into their barn area and the babies are kept in here. So everything is right where I need it to be. I pretty much let the goats determine the order that they're going to get milked in. And that is based on a lot of the dominance hierarchy of this herd. And of course, Sabrina is our herd queen. So she always gets to go first and nobody argues with that. Every day I tend to get a little bit of squabbling over who gets to come in next. So I try to maintain the order, but sometimes with goats, it's a lot of chaos. So we're going to let Sabrina in. She's going to hop on the stand and then Crystal comes in with her and she just gets some treats. And of course, Cora's going to sneak in today. All right. So when you get the right goats in, they typically know where to go. So Sabrina is a mini Nubian. She is six years old now. And this is her fourth freshening. She is an excellent mama and an excellent milker. She gives me a really creamy milk that has a very sweet flavor. And she pretty much consistently gives me the most milk. I actually learned to milk on this goat basically. And she had a very lopsided, difficult to milk udder at the time. And it's actually improved considerably. And now is one of my favorite udders. So I'm just using a little bit of diluted chlorhexidine on some clean rags to wash them. I do wash the whole udder and that's because with goats, you're really gonna massage that whole udder and anywhere I'm touching, I wanna be clean. I come right back through and I dry it really thoroughly. And then I strip the udder, get a couple squirts out of each teat. Make sure that milk is normal. Looks good. And then we milk. Sabrina has pretty small teeth and she tends to be really tight when I first start milking her. So it takes uh, a little bit of hand strength to get her going. But once it gets flowing, she's usually pretty easy. She tends to be a pretty sassy, opinionated goat. Typically once a day while I'm milking her, she'll have some kind of tantrum, but she very rarely actually kicks the bucket. 
I think she's actually pretty careful not to. <laughs> when Crystal's done eating, Cinnamon comes in. She's another one of my Bordeaux's, and this is her second freshening. And I'm, I am not milking her. I'm not milking either of those Bordeaux's just because they don't have a lot of milk. So they can give it all to their babies. When we're getting towards the end of milking, I will slowly work my hands higher and higher up on the udder. So I'm really not just milking the tea, I'm milking the entire udder and I'm giving it a good massage, massaging all that milk that might be stored higher up in the glands down to the tea so they can get her completely milked out. And if you've ever watched a baby goat nurse, you will see how incredibly rough they are. I've seen babies lift their mama's whole hips up with their head, head butting them. So there's really nothing I'm gonna do with my hands that is too rough for this goat. As you can see, she barely notices that I'm back here. In fact, I'm relieving a lot of the pressure that's built up as her udder got full overnight. So they actually get a release of endorphins and this feels really good to them. <laughs> Sabrina, once she's done here, she's gonna go into her spot and take a long, hard nap for about the next hour while I milk everybody else. It's probably her favorite time of day. She's got a full belly, an empty udder, and no kid. So, good time for a nap. As soon as I'm done milking, I put the milk away in my nice big milk tote. And then I spray everybody's teats with Fight Back. It's a chlorhexidine spray that chills as you spray it. So it disinfects and helps close that teat up so that no debris or bacteria can get in there. They don't love it. Come on. Good girl, Sin. You can come in for it. Just let her in. Spring it out. Next we have Cora. Cora's mom was a Nubian and her dad was a Kiko Boar Cross. She's one of the only daughters I have of my Buck Merlin, who was one of my favorite goats I ever owned. And Cora's just a really sweet goat, so she's one of my favorites, but I would probably say that about all of these girls. I'm pretty attached to my goats. For the past two seasons, Cora has been really a rock star in my milking lineup. She has an awesome udder. It's super easy to milk. She's got long teats, a really soft skin on her udder. Very easy to milk out really quickly. But recently she has struggled with her weight a little bit. We've had a, a couple instances where her parasite load has gotten a little higher than I like it to be. So I've actually backed off on milking her. I've dewormed her one more time. And so I'd have to discard that milk anyway while that drug washes out of her body. But I feel like in the last week or so that she's actually started to put weight back on, her coat's looking really good. So I think we're making progress. So I'm gonna have to decide if I'm gonna start milking her again or not. I'm kind of leaning towards just weaning her baby and letting her dry up for the season. I have an abundance of milk as it is and I would rather see her maintain a good condition and be able to breed her back without any worries uh, next year. She always makes cute, happy noises when she's eating. Come on. All done. Sometimes they don't like to leave, even though there is not a scrap of food left in that bowl. Come on. All done. Cora out. Cora out. Other girls waiting. Come on, Evie. Vivian, Vivian, not even in the barn. Come on, Vivian. Heidi, you're not next. No, no. Come on, old girl. I know. Up, up. Good girl. Evie, up, up. No. Up, up. Good girl. So this little girl is Evie. She's about a year old and she was pretty small, a little on the thin side. 
So I'm just giving her a little extra nutrition. And then this big girl is Vivian. She is one of my oldest goats. I don't know how old she is, but I've had her for five years now. And she's had several really nice babies for me, including Figaro, the buck that I'm keeping from this season. That's her son. So this may be the last year that we breed her. I'm probably just gonna keep milking her through the winter. Uh, so we have a little bit of milk and then we'll just see how she does. But I think it's probably time to retire this <laughs> old girl. I know you wanna eat, I'll get your food. Vivian is a purebred Nubian. I got her from a livestock dealer really, really cheap. I had absolutely no history on her. He only owned her for about two weeks. She's always had a little bit of trouble keeping weight on. She has an enormous frame, as you can see. She's one of my tallest goats. But other than that, she's been super healthy. It's been years and years since I've had to deworm her. She did get a little bit of mastitis last year and I wasn't able to milk her, but this year her udder is back in great shape. She's been a very solid milker for me this season. So along with Sabrina, Vivian was one of the first goats that we started milking on the farm. And she was a great one to learn on because she's got these really long, easy to milk teeth. And generally she's very well behaved. Despite being one of my craziest, kookiest goats, she, she likes to get in trouble sometimes jumping on stuff, but on the milk stand, she's uh, pretty much a perfect lady. So this is Heidi. She is one of my Oberhasley does. I have three of them and they were all given to me for free by a family that had to move away from their rental farm and couldn't take the goats with them. Of the three, Heidi is definitely the best milker. She's probably the friendliest of the three as well and definitely the most sweet natured. I didn't get any sort of history on these goats when I got them. Uh, all the family could tell me was that they got them from a local commercial dairy a couple years before that. They had not bred these goats, but I don't know if they were bred before. I don't know how old she is. Since she's been with me, she's had babies twice. She's had a set of twins, and then this year, a single buckling. Yeah, you're next, sweetheart. All right, Heidi out. You're all done. You're all done. Come on. Come on, Calypso. Come on, big girl. No. Heidi out. Heidi out. Up, up. Good girl. Good girl. Next up, we have Calypso. She is a purebred Bordeaux. And even though this is a meat breed, I do milk her because, well, she's really easy to milk. And although I don't get a ton of milk out of her, maybe just a quart, it does have a lot of cream to it. She has a really high butterfat percentage. So I actually want to get all my girls tested and see what it actually is. But I know that she leaves a really thick cream line on her milk. And she is just looking absolutely gorgeous this year. She probably keeps her weight better than any of my goats. And you can just see how shiny her coat is. This is the best I've ever seen her look. She is a second freshener and she's had a single baby each time. Getting nervous? You're okay. You're okay. Alright, tank out. Come on. Come on, big girl. Wanna snowball? Girl. 
shit. She's gonna be like, they might know that. Next up, we have Helga. She is another one of the over -hostlies. Helga and I get along quite a bit, but she is terrified of Daryl, even though he has been nothing but sweet to her. So I think this goat may have some trauma in her past. She's been really hard to kind of win over, but she's been an awesome milker. We decided not to breed her this year, and I milked her through the winter, so she supplied us with all of the milk we needed all winter long, and she's still going strong. She's still giving just as much as she was a year ago. She has a little bit of a problem with her udder, which I'll show you in a minute. So poor Helga here has what's known as a blown teat. She came to me like this, and uh, when I bred her, I didn't realize it until her udder filled up. An udder like this takes a lot of management. You basically have to milk her a couple times a day to make that teat available for kids to drink out of, because it's just so wide they can't get their little mouths around it. So I really had to learn a different way of milking her. There's no like natural taper to the teat. So it makes it really hard to kind of uh, occlude the milk down into the bottom of the teat so you can squeeze it out. I can feel milk like flowing back up into the udder. So she takes an awful lot of hand strength to milk, but I'm pretty used to it now. When we did breed Helga, we paired her with my boar buck Casanova and she had a set of twins, a boy and a girl. And we still have both of them and she still snuggles with them every night. And I'm hoping that her daughter will be in addition to the milking lineup next year. Yeah. Both of the over hostlies moved by neck. They were trained at some point. All right, girls. So much pushing. Come on. All right. Come on, Ben. What are you doing? Come on. There you go. Good morning, Gwen. All right. This beautiful beast is Guinevere. She is another one of my purebred Nubians. And she also came from the livestock dealer that we got Vivian from. So again, I don't know anything about her before she got here. I do know that she was pretty much terrified of us for about a year. And now she is about the sweetest, loviest goat that we have. Gwen is always up for a cuddle. Sabrina says she wants her baby back now. This is my first year milking Gwen, even though we've owned her for about five years. Gwen likes to kick a lot in the very beginning. She usually settles right down as soon as I actually start milking her, but we'll see. No. No. So Gwen has had babies four times that I know of. She came with a very small baby named Blair uh, when I bought her. Then she had a set of twins and Cora is one of those. Then the next year we thought she wasn't bred, but she just got bred very late. She ended up having summer babies. She had two of those and you'll meet Destiny in just a few minutes. That's her daughter from that year. And then this year she had quads, but unfortunately only two of those survived. But those two are doing great. So Gwen does not have the best ardor. She gives me quite a bit of milk, but she has very poor attachments. She has uh, a pendulum udder, where it really only has attachments at the very top. And they're very narrow. So she's very weird to milk. It's kind of hard to work with, but she's a good girl. She gives me plenty to keep keep working with it. Even though I have retained some of her daughters, if I don't see a significant improvement in the utter attachments on them, I'm probably not gonna keep them. Doesn't mean that they're bad goats and that they couldn't make somebody else uh, a very good dairy goat. But at this point, I need to start being a little more selective about who I keep. And in contrast, Vivian has really, really nice Utter attachments, and that's one of the big reasons that I decided to keep her son Figaro as our breeding buck for next season. Possibly by breeding him to Gwen, I could improve on the daughters from that cross, but we just have to wait and see. I don't know how old Gwen is. I believe she is getting up there in years, and her and Vivian are both gonna be retired here at the farm. 
we're not able to offer all of our animals that luxury that to live out their days on our farm uh, in happy retirement, but I would like to do that for a special few, especially our original girls and the ones that have, have really produced for us year after year. They've really kind of earned that right. So Gwen is definitely going to stick around as long as uh, we can keep her healthy. Yeah. You're such a good girl. Why not? Can you give me kisses today? Yeah. I love you. That's how you get to stay. <laughs> Went out. Went out. Go on, big girl. All right. Our last milker of the day is Cheryl. Cheryl is a half sister to Cora. They have the same sire. That was my Kiko Boar Buck Merlin. And then her mom was a purebred Nubian who came along with Vivian and Gwen. We had to put her mom down last year because she had a hernia. So she is no longer with us, but luckily we have her beautiful daughter. Um, and she's been a great addition to the herd. Dancing. Cheryl gets to go last because she is my most difficult to milk. So by and large, I let the girls determine their own order when they come into the milking room. But this one I insist on coming in last, which she hates. If you heard any screaming earlier in the video, that was her protesting, which she does every day, uh, that she has to wait the longest to get milked. And along with her, all the other girls get mad that I'm holding their babies hostage. So. We better get her milked and release them. <laughs> All right, Cheryl, let's get this done. I'm going to get mad. Easy. So last year, Cheryl, like, never kicked. And then this year, she had some utter edema in the very beginning. And then her kids were biting her teeth. And she got these wounds that I had a really hard time healing. She's in great shape now, but I think she's just a little, like, gun-shy from that. It was kind of painful for me to milk her for a while because of those wounds. Usually she settles down. But I got to watch her feet really closely. She's definitely the most likely to put her foot in the bucket. It doesn't help that everybody is worked up and mad because they want to be reunited. So, babies are yelling, mamas are yelling. Everyone says it's time to be done. So Cheryl here is a really good producer. She has one of the most capacious udders on the farm. She has had babies twice. She's had twins both times. So last year she had two boys and this year she gave me two girls. So her girls are Fern and Flora. I'm hoping to retain both of them. Cheryl's also the biggest screamer on the farm. She's the one that lets me know that they're unhappy with something. Chief complainer. So all that milk that I strip out of their teats before I actually milk them goes to the dogs. There you go, Sai. Cheryl out. So Cheryl goes out. Hildy and Destiny come in for treats. Come on. Come on. Up, up. Hildy, over. Good girls. And the babies get released. <laughs> so Hildy is the third of the Oberhasli does. I believe she is Helga's daughter. I was planning on milking her this season, but I had a really hard time training her. She trained to the milk stand really well, as you can see, but I could not get her to stop kicking. I tried uh, a lot of different ways of tying her legs. And eventually I just decided that I was milking so many already, I didn't really need her, and I was just tired of fighting with her every day. She is a big, strong, opinionated goat. She is number two in the herd, and she is probably the biggest bully of them all. So she definitely tries to bully me around a little bit too. But we've come to an understanding that she gets to come in at the end and get treats as long as she is play at the gate. and. She did that today, so I'm going to get her treats. The 
This girl's name is Destiny, and she is currently very pregnant. We're about three weeks away from her due date. And so she's been coming in to get some extra nutrition as she goes into the late stages of gestation and to get trained on the milk stand and to get used to me touching her and getting her ready to be milked because she's going to join the lineup as soon as we get babies on the ground. This is the first year that I decided to breed her. She was a June baby, so she's coming up on her second birthday. She is a daughter of Gwen, so half-sister to Cora. And her dad was a full boar, so she's a Nubian boar cross. I think we're going to have an easy time adding her to the milking lineup in just a couple weeks. Fill the out. I know. Trying to get me with those horns. All right, Destiny. You're all done. The girl. The girl. No. No. There you go. Girl. So when we're done, we lock up this gate really well. I have a couple of goats that can figure out how to get this chain off. But if it's firmly in this notch, they have a little bit of a harder time at least. Then I just got to do a little bit of cleanup here. I've got to rush and get the milk filtered and in the freezer to chill. And then typically after that, I finish up any goat chores that need to be done, which this time of year, we're getting them out rotating around our forest areas. And if you'd like to see our last video where we go through everything we do to get these guys out grazing in the woods, you can check it out right here. Thanks for watching guys, and we'll see you next time.